Hello nurses, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. And today's focus is going to be on the causes of mean arterial pressure to be low and Chad's causes. And this on this sticky note, which can be found on Nursing Camp, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, where it can be downloaded, or on NursingCamp.com. Alright, let's talk a little bit about mean arterial pressure or the MAP. Mean arterial pressure is the three dentists DDS. Dentists. Diastolic times two plus systolic divided by three gives you the mean arterial pressure. So if you have a mean, if you have a blood pressure of one hundred and fifty, diastolic times two, which would be a hundred, plus systolic, which is another hundred, gives you twenty. Divide by 3, which will give you 16, that's 18, and 20, 66, will give you a mean arterial pressure of 66. And what we want it to be is greater than 65. So if it's 66, though this blood pressure seems low, what that means is that they're going to perfuse their kidneys. And we'll have urinary output. So even though it's low, they would still be producing in giving perfusion to the kidneys. So that's interesting. So you, when you think about this, you know, mean arterial pressure needs to be at least 65 for perfusion to the kidneys. If it's not, then the BUN and creatinine will be elevated. And that is a sign of renal problems. So if the B1 and creatinine are elevated, the mean arterial pressure less than 65 could be the problem. Okay, interesting thing about mean arterial pressure is for the brain, which also needs perfusion, is that needs to be 70 to 75. So if it's less than 70 to 75, um, the brain is not being perfused. And so we have decreased level of consciousness, and that would be acute. And that's why restlessness, decreased level of consciousness is always acute and it needs to be assessed. And it's usually, you know, related to perfusion or hypoxia. Okay, let's move on. All right, so CHADS causes of a low MAP. All right, C stands for the CHF. Okay, um, that is because of the CHF, you have the ventricle here, the heart. Well, on this side, the V, V for ventricle, or my son says V for vampires, for ventricles, is there's damage to the ventricle. And what happens is because it can't pump quite, you can't get out your ejection fraction. And that ejection fraction is the amount of volume of blood getting out of the heart to the rest of the body, to the fingers and toes. Now, Looks like a mask. All right. Um, now that needs to be greater than 65%. If it is less than 65%, um, you will have uh, a decreased mean arterial pressure, and you're going to have signs and symptoms of heart failure, like shortness of breath, depending on what side, right side versus left side. Um, also, another way to know that they have a uh, uh, decreased mean would be an elevated BNP, right, which is the test, the lab test, for the heart failure. And BNP comes in when overstretch of this cardiac muscle elevates. It needs to be less than 150. So if it's greater than 150, it's positive for CHF. See my BNP lecture where I cover that with CHF. Another cause of low mean arterial pressure would be bleeding. And that makes sense because if you have a filled vessel, you should have a normal blood pressure. Um, but if the vessel is half filled, like in bleeding, you can have decreased perfusion and decreased mean arterial pressure. Well, in response to that, the heart rate goes up.
to try to maintain this mean arterial pressure. But that only works for so long. And then um, if the blood is not replaced or fluids aren't given, uh, the mean arterial pressure will stop to decrease. The kidneys will start to shut down to hopefully retain water to try to treat this. All right, next thing. Uh, anemias. Well, usually I teach that anemia is unacceptable. Um, there's a reason for the anemia. So whenever you hear anemia, you say why and what's the reason? Um, well, it could be low hemoglobin in hematocrit. And there's just not enough red blood cells to carry and maintain this mean arterial pressure. Next is dehydration. Just like I said with blood, with dehydration, there's just not enough. So the same mechanisms happen. Increased heart rate. And um, that only works for a little bit, but eventually the mean arterial pressure will decrease, and then the kidneys will shut down and hold on to water to try to get it back to this. But you'll see changes of level of consciousness first um, because the mean arterial pressure will drop. That's why with dehydration you start to see decreased level of consciousness. Alright, next is shock. Hypovolemic cardiac septic. Well, let's take one at a time. CHF is like cardiogenic because it's overfilled and the heart is not pumping. So it can't maintain mean arterial pressure. And septic shock is just like dehydration, right? So the vessels vasodilate in the presence of lactic acid. And this vasodilates, and that's why um, they can't maintain mean arterial pressure. So the body's response for this is generally uh, the fingers and toes of um, the body this is fascinating because in the body you have protection mechanisms for this you have your alpha back here right and you have your heart rate here well if there's decreased perfusion what happens is you just have to get vasoconstriction out here and that's called SVR systemic vascular resistance covered in my septicis lecture but they start to clamp down naturally to increase the fluid back to the heart in representation of this. The next thing is a septic shock, well, cardio and hypovolemic shock. So sepsis and hypovolemic are kind of the same. Not the same, but same kind of underlying vasodilation or decreased volume. Well, my name is Camp, and this is Nursing Camp, and this is uh, my take on mean arterial pressures and Chad's causes of l low mean arterial pressure. That's about it for me. You can find the study sheet on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter, and download it on nursingcamp.com. That's it. Nurse on, and we'll talk to you next time.